Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine, and I am going to cut the Cook County budget. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. For the identity of the real Marty Levinson, please stay tuned to the Northtown News Magazine. Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Back to that lemon lime. Hi there, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine with the greatest cameraman around, Sonny Hirsch, and your host, Javi Myers. Thank you, Marty. Hi, Kathleen. How you doing? Avi Meyer is here. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Dial us up on the web at ntnm.org. Uh, community policing, we're all big on that. Hopefully we've got a really good new commander right now. And I'm not going to mention any names because I'm going to get myself in a ton of trouble if that person isn't the commander. <laughs> but, um, you know, we hope he's community friendly because even though the last commander was highly thought of by many people in many circles, Community policing took a nosedive. You can't always do everything right, and we'd really like to see community policing do well. We're actually filming the, the, the day after National Night Out, and we, it was a very nice National Night Out. Um, there was only one official event in the, uh, in the 24th District, Rogers Park, West Rogers Park, and that was over at Willie White Park. I want to congratulate Eva McCann for all the wonderful work she did. Uh, John Delgado, his first time around as B-Team Sergeant, Sonny Hirsch, who's the President of the um, District Advisor, uh, Chairman of the District Advisory Committee of the 24th District. And there are so many people that put in so much work, and I want to start saying names like Jane Hoffman and Pat Kenny. And I'm going to leave people out, and um, I better stop right now. But hey, all of you guys, you know who you are. You did a great job. And um, I, I, uh, so I, I got to at least uh, interview a bunch of you yesterday with uh, Sonny, and I uh, hope it works out okay. In any event, um, this particular show we're going to dedicate to Hank Jacob, who at this point um, is officially retired from the Chicago Police Department. He was so much behind. He and his partner Steve Cohn, they were, they were partners for 30 years. They were the original top two people in the community policing office, as designated by then um, Sergeant Bruce Rotner, who's now Deputy Chief of Area 3. And uh, we're really going to miss Hank. And by the way, Hank is, Hank's stepdad is, um, is somebody that my next guest is familiar with. His stepdad is Jimmy Sullivan. And uh, Hank, we want to wish you all the best of luck in retirement. And hope we know you're going to land on your feet. And you're definitely going to be missed. You're one of the truly great guys. And you're one of the, you're one of the finest people I've dealt with in the entire community policing world over the last 15, 16 years. In any event, uh, my next guest needs no introduction. Well, that's what I say about Bernie Stone. And actually, if he didn't need an introduction, I wouldn't introduce him. But you know what? I may not be introducing him as the president of the Water Reclamation District anymore because he is going into a new venture and he is running for president of the Cook County Board. We're talking about Terry O'Brien. Terry, how you doing? Good, Abby. Thanks for having me on again. It's First of all, my pleasure. pleasure. And uh, this, is, this is some news. We've always talked to you about how many, you know, the, the chase for the Wailka filter and cleaning the inland waterways and... Um, you know, you know, being environmentally responsible, but uh, you know, you've only been there. You know, some politicians they stay two years, they move up. You, you've been knocking around what about 22 years right now? 21 years <laughs> and uh, 13 years as the agency's president, and uh, it's been a great run. And uh, you know, I, what uh, brought me into the idea of uh, of doing this is, you know, a lot of people kind of prodding me, and. Uh, you know, the thought of, uh, you know, every time you turn on the news at night, you open the paper, there's something else going on with county government. And uh, my parents always told me, says, you know, if you have a problem with something, don't complain, do something about it. So uh, uh, I threw my hat in the ring officially on July 24th. Uh, we made the announcement down by our uh, <clears throat> Nicholas J. Mellis Centennial Fountain along the river. Which I thought was very appropriate. Well, yeah, and I, I mean, what I wanted to do is, you know, I don't want it to be a negative situation. I just want to highlight what we've done at the Water Reclamation District and, and how well run and fiscally responsible that agency has been to the taxpayers of the county. No, but he hasn't. As a matter of fact, you've been unique that way. 
We have been. We have been. And, uh, you know, I'm just kind of touching on some of the points and what we've done there uh, as a, a group of commissioners and a president of the agency. You know, way back in uh, 1989, it was just after I got on the board, you know, we passed our own self-imposed tax cap, which was six years before the General Assembly actually made it law. So we, we had the foresight to look at uh, our finances then and to kind of put that limit on our staff with regards to their budgeting process and things of that nature. Um, one of the other things that we're, uh, we're, we have earned over the years is a AAA bond rating. Uh, all three bond rating agencies, uh, Fitch, Moody's, Standard & Poor's, and Standard & Poor's has been um, <clears throat> has only given four wastewater and water treatment agencies this particular honor, and we're, we're pleased to have that, um, especially during these tough economic times. I mean, the county's faced with right now having their bond rating lowered, and even possibly one of the agencies is looking to put them on a negative watch because of uh, uh, only their half payment to the pension fund. So uh, we're happy about that. Last year, $56 million back to the taxpayers. Again, everybody's feeling the, the crunch with uh, tough economic times. Uh, we've been very uh, fiscal responsible with regards to managing our dollars, which allows us, you know, from the interest earned on those dollars, uh, to be able to abate that money back to the taxpayers. I don't think there's another agency, you know, locally or possibly in the state that can say that they have done that. No, not even close. And as a matter of fact, there's agencies within the state already and, and municipal governments that are already having their bond rating lowered. Yeah, and, and, you know, from the abatement side of it, people are screaming that they're in a hole $56 million or, or better. Or so, more. Yeah. Or more. So it's, it's been a tough, tough task. Um, you know, one of the other things that, you know, we've pursued over the years, and I know we've talked about it on your shows all the time, is the fact that, you know, my trips to Washington uh, with our general superintendent and our vice president, trying to sc secure federal grants for the Tunnel and Reservoir Project, um, as well as our $30 billion in infrastructure. Um, you know, we have to keep that up to speed so that we maintain uh, the integrity of the treatment of the wastewater, so we meet our permit requirements. and. Uh, since I was just going back through some of the figures, since uh, 1988, we've secured about $1 billion in uh, federal grants. Um, either, wow. Either through the EPA, um, US EPA, or through the Army Corps of Engineers. And the bulk of it has gone to the, the tunnel and reservoir plan. So, Which is really one of the most spectacular engineering feats uh, in, in the country, if not the world. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, we can't take credit for everything because what we've done is we've worked with our congressional delegation and, and I think that's important in any governmental agency that you're, uh, you're either involved with or you're, you're managing. Um, you got to have a great a working rapport with other elected officials, uh, with members of the community, because that's the only way to get things done. I mean, we've seen so much bickering back and forth in these county board meetings, and, and it's al almost gotten to be personal. Uh, at, at a point and uh, I think it is <laughs> well, I'm sure it is but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you want to hear what some of these guys say about their uh, cohorts after the show <laughs> yeah well you know and I, and I think you know hey after the election's over you got to put a put aside party lines and you got to do what's best for the taxpayers of the county and, it, and it's not happening and I don't see that happen and you know I've I've told people you know I've worked with congressional members on both sides of the aisle uh, people in the General Assembly, whether it's in the House or the Senate, we work with both sides of the aisle. And even in a, on a local level with all these mayors and, in, and the new stormwater management program that we have going on, um, we've had to work with everybody. So it, it's an easy task. I think when people really want to get things done, they sit down and they figure, well, it's a good time. So That's one of the, uh, one of the more interesting things I've read about the race so far is, is one, I, I want to say I probably read it in Capital Facts, but they often allude to other uh, articles. They talked about one of, the, one of the advantages you have compared to other candidates is that you've already worked with just about everybody there is to work with in this area on various projects. So everybody's familiar with you and you're familiar with them. Instead of going to the press and fighting a, and fighting a, a worthless campaign that doesn't get anywhere, you actually usually keep quiet and get the job done. Well, that's the key. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not out there looking for accolades. I just like to see to get things done. I mean, you know, I told one reporter, I said, I'm a doer. You know, I like to see things happen and things get accomplished. Uh, it makes people feel good, but also, you know, the residents of the county can see that things are getting done properly. 
And they are. The, the, one of the things is people don't realize when you don't hear about something in government that's usually kind of a good thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I mean, you know, I had one reporter came in and says, we don't, he goes, why, why would you want to leave an agency that you've been with for 21 years and it's run successfully and things of that nature? I said, I really don't want to, but, you know, I see another problem, you know, out there that I think, you know, what I've done at the agency I can bring to Cook County government and help, you know, resolve some of the issues over there. It's not going to happen overnight. Um, no, they not at all. You've got a very interesting array of characters. Well, <laughs> not only characters, but problems. I mean, uh, obviously, since I announced, I think my phone rings uh, almost uh, 18 hours a day with people wow. telling me what, you know, what's going on there and things that, you know, they don't like and, and what's what needs to be changed. So, Well, that's encouraging that they're talking to you. It is. I mean, we've had a tremendous response from all over the county. Um, and, and, and it goes to... I think uh, the credit that what we've done is we work with everybody, you know, in the agency I'm at right now. So, uh, and they feel comfortable that, you know, I will sit down and I'll talk to them, we'll discuss the matters, and, and we'll work from there. I mean, the solution may not always be what they want, but they know I'll be there to listen to them and, and to deal with them and try to, you know, uh, deal with their problems. No, I think that's good, and I think I'm glad people have uh, faith in you along those <laughs> lines. One thing I, I do want to mention real quick is that. Um, you know, you're dealing, it's, it's interesting because, you, you know, those, those of you who are out there, you don't really see the firms that these guys deal with, you know, and the, and, and the apparatus that, 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 you know, that's needed to run a campaign. And actually, my, one of my favorite firms to deal with, maybe probably my favorite firm right now is Granger Terry that uh, you've been using. And, you know, I, it, it's amazing how many people I like they deal with. Yeah. And uh, I just want to say hi to Phil and Caitlin and Monique and the whole gang over there. And um, I don't have to worry about... Uh, I don't bother them to get in touch with you. I do with <laughs> Just call people. me direct. <laughs> yeah, I usually do. Like, yeah. like I. By the way, did before this particular show, I said, you know, hey, if you don't see us out back, we'll be out in the vegetable garden, and uh, you know, just come on out back. I, I should point out, by the way, although he hasn't been guilty of it yet, that, that that some of the guests that appear on this show are bribed with fresh organic herbs from the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe you're using some of our biosolids. <laughs> to no, fertilize no, no, no. You know what I mean? For those of you who don't know, some of the bio... I had a buddy who, who was very ambitious, worked his head off in high school, in college, saved money, put down a down payment on a two-flat, and um, wanted to make a real nice garden and got the uh, biosolids in the early 70s from the uh, before-year time with the Water Reclamation District. It was called New Earth. New Earth. New Earth. And, 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 and the Earth is so new that it'll take about a couple hundred years before you can grow anything in there ever again. <laughs> well, at least you're getting your, your metals and, you know. <laughs> that Heavy you metals, need. use prophylactics. You need vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> no, all kidding aside. But th there, was, there was concerns back then. But uh, I think we've got it uh, under control. Um, no, as a matter of fact, you guys have been terrific. You, got, you know, the funny <clears throat> thing is a lot of people wave a flag for um, ecology and, and the environment and the whole shot. And instead of wave, waving flags and, 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 and making it a religion, you're actually just quietly doing something about it. Well, and, you know, the thing is, is you do things right and uh, you accomplish nice things and, um, you know, it's, it never gets reported, you know. But, uh, and, but you've always been great as far as uh, doing that. Uh, to give the water reclamation district exposure, you know, with your tours of the tunnel and uh, down the North Shore uh, Channel. As a matter of uh, fact, the, the the fastest rising show we have right now in, in our own ratings, the number six watch show of all. We've got about 250 shows on the web right now. Yeah. Uh, num number six in climbing is is our tour of the North Shore Channel with you and with Ken Ken Johnson. Is okay, it? Okay. Yeah. Or, yeah. Ken Johnson. And you know, checking out that and and aboard PC one, which. Is does not stand for politically correct one. It stands for pollution control. Pollution control. Right, and um, and uh, the, and the number one show, of course, is the deep tunnel, which is you can actually link directly from construction libraries. We spent spent a day three hundred feet underground, which was one heck of an experience. And we were together with uh, Jim Nally and and your whole, whole crew host, over yeah. there. And there's a lot of people who still want to go down there. I told them, you know. The only way to go down there now is brown water rafting. You know? <laughs> so it's, just, uh, it's, all, it's all in place and it's functional, and uh, we've been using it through all these 100 uh, year storms that we're getting every week. So, uh, you know, wow. It's just, uh, it's just, uh, <laughs> That's a new phrase. I will have to. Uh, <laughs> it could be. You know, I, I often thought of talking to the mayor about using it as a luge. You know, oh, for the, for the Olympics. Olympics, yeah. We'll drop them in a Wilmette and they can uh, shoot down to McCook. 
That's uh, definitely Which is the idea. longest leg of the tunnel. Does that qualify as a shovel ready project? <laughs> <laughs> it's done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could definitely work. Um, so, okay, the campaign trail. So basically, well, you still got, you know, actually, people don't realize you don't get a full time salary and it's not a full time job at the uh, Water Rec. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. So, so you know, it's, which actually is part of the fiscal responsibility of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, uh, Although you may work full-time hours at it. I'm there every day. Um, well, it's not just that he's there every day, but you know, you're also giving speeches, lectures, you're, you're, you go to Washington. We go around to the various community groups. We have a very aggressive uh, talking, pro, you know, uh, speaking program to you know, not only seniors groups, Kiwanis, Lions, uh, schools. Uh, we've opened our plants up to tours again you know, since the 9-11 situation. So uh, we've, we've met some uh, schools out there to give them the tours of our facilities. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we're opening things up again. We want people to see what we do and how we impact their lives on a daily basis when it comes to the water environment throughout the county. Yeah, we, by the way, let, let, let us just put in Sonny and I, especially during the summer right now where the weather's decent, let us put in our um, two cents. It's like if you'd like to take us on another tour to show us another aspect of uh, what's going on, we'd love to do it while we still have the chance before you're uh, Mr. Cook County Board President. <laughs> Well, I'm sure they'll open it up to you, even if I am Cook County Board President. No, that, so. that very well could be, but, uh, you know, I figure we'll put in our pitch right now. We'll so, work on uh, that. No, okay, that sounds good, and thank you. I know you, you want the uh, mainstream pumping station. Yeah, that would be good. That would be uh, definitely interesting and educational, and, you know, people really like that stuff almost as much as anything we do, if not more yeah. than just about uh, everything we do. It's interesting from the fact that nobody sees it, you know, and, and you get it out to the public, and, you know, it's amazing what people take for granted and, and the operations behind uh, what they're taking for yeah, granted. The North Shore so. Channel is five blocks from this house, and, and when I was there right at Pratt, I couldn't believe the world that I wasn't aware of. Yeah. And it really is an amazing sight. Well, and you know, having grown up not too far from the North Shore Channel, I remember when it was a big sty. I mean, the parks weren't there, it was just overgrown weeds and uh, vegetation, and it was. Uh, it was a place to hang out and hide from everybody else, you know. Yeah, and I didn't want to be downwind of it either. <laughs> but, uh, and that's what a lot of people did. But, yeah. you know, now with uh, our relationship with the Chicago Park District and, and what they've done to uh, maintain the property, you know, with the bike trails and, and the parks that they put in and, and manicuring the, the lawns and stuff like that, it's been a great relationship. Yeah, so let me ask you, even though I kind of more could probably answer this question myself for you. Um, you know, I, I've kind of got to, you, you've been there 22 years. And I guess your or 21 years, 22, 21, 21 on a way to 21. 22. And I guess your your you know your kids are at an older age right now. So because uh, I know there was talk before uh, Jesse White became Secretary of State of you becoming Secretary of State, but you know I I know that you wanted to uh, make sure your kids were uh, had a stay at home father at the time, and uh, <laughs> I got to make sure they get educated too. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing. Usually a dad around helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't go very far in the workforce nowadays if you don't have a, a good education. Yeah, so and that's. You know, that's the key. So uh, with all the contacts, with all the goodwill, um, is there a particular reason you picked uh, Cook County Board President? I mean, the governor's spot's open, U.S. Senate is open. <laughs> you, you know, uh, three years from now, Obama's running for re-election. Well, I <laughs> <laughs> must have been the word president. <laughs> I just uh, I probably want to stay closer to home. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I just think it's it will be a great challenge, and I think it's going to be a matter of putting a a good qualified professional team together to uh, to bring it up and uh, and get it run properly. Well, I, I think if there's one place I could say that has not been phys fiscally responsible, it would be county government yeah. and then some. It, it is just, um, and it's not that some people haven't tried, but you know, like it's just such a diverse, and it really is. You know, one of the p things people don't realize is what a what a s interesting cast of characters you have at Water Reclamation, but you guys all work together, and yeah. that's basically. You know, I, I credit you because just about everybody, at least in public, says good things about you. Yeah. Well, it's it, the whole thing is, is I've worked with everybody. You know. Yeah. Um, no, you have as a matter and of fact. And that's the key. I mean, you know, at, at the end of the day, you want to make sure you get things done and done right. And uh, and that's what I'm all about is making sure uh, things happen properly and uh, and people are happy with with the work that we and the effort we put into it. So um, you know, that's why we're working. I mean. You know, you got the health system we got to worry about. You got the jail you got to worry about. Uh, you know, the biggest thing that uh, I see happening right now is uh, economic development is falling flat on its face because the taxes are so high. 
it's obvious, it's no secret that I, you know, I work in the private sector in, in a small company, and 90% uh, of your small companies make up, uh, you know, businesses in the area. And uh, uh, just last Friday, I was up in Wheeling, and a client that I have up there is actually shutting their doors, and they're moving up to Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin. And I asked the gentleman, I said, point blank, I said, why are you leaving Cook County? He said, we're being taxed out of the county. He said, we have gotten a very nice deal, sweetheart deal in Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin, and that's where we're moving. And, and I've traveled to Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin, and they, hit, they do. They have two brand new industrial parks up there. Um, and if you look around, there's all kinds of Chicago companies and Cook County companies now res, uh, re residing up in that, that particular area. And, uh, and it's because they've, they've helped them out. I mean, their sales tax is, I think, 5.5%. Um, As opposed to ours, 10.25, the highest in the nation. You know, and, and people say, well, how are you going to make up that difference? I said, well, you know, you got to look at everything as a whole. I mean, uh, you know, like I told you, I said, people are calling me every day, telling me where, you know, things can be cut and things like that, where the waste is and stuff like that. And we're going to look at that. And I think we're going to have some successes just from what I'm hearing and what can be done. The healthcare system, for instance, I mean, they put in a, uh, a private board, which, a good thing, but now who's that private board accountable to? Okay. Nobody. And, you know, the problem I see with do is what you're doing is you're just transferring one set of people in to take over for another set of people. Well, anybody who's in business would understand that if there's a company faltering, they do like a turnaround study. And this turnaround study looks at the operations, sees where the problems are, and addresses those problems and rectifies the situation and then puts a new management team in there to deal with it or to carry them through that. The county didn't do that. They just took out the county board and put in an independent board. Now, whether they're doing it now, I don't know. But I've seen you know, situations like this where you change boards out, the new board comes in, they don't answer to anybody. They start building their own empire, you know, without any accountability. And, and I think that's one of the first things that has to be addressed is you got to look at the operation as a whole and see. For instance, um, insurance-wise, 57% uh, of the people who receive some type of medical service from Cook County Health System pay nothing. Now, we understand there's tough times, we have poor population, but it's getting beyond the poor. I mean, there are people losing their jobs that need this, this health care coverage. There's another 43% who can either pay something or pay it all. And they're only collecting from 10% of that 43%. Wow. So, I mean, that's a quarter of, of that population that they're only receiving revenues from, which is terrible. I mean, I've heard people walk in, they've given service, you know, they don't even ask for an insurance card or anything. They get the service and they leave. Wow. Um, I got to go there. Well, <laughs> before you get elected. But <laughs> you got to go there. There's people from Lake County, DuPage County, and Will County that are going there as well. So, you know, whether we work out a. Uh, You're a, heading south after the shoot? <laughs> <laughs> but whether, you, whether you actually, you know, put in some type or come to some type of agreement with these collar counties who don't have health care systems like mm -hmm. Cook County. You know, to recover some of the costs from their population coming in and using our facilities. I mean, that's, that would be a good starting point, or, or have the state pick up those costs. You know, another issue is the Medicare and Medicaid. You know, I'm told that uh, there are probably two rooms filled with paperwork that uh, either was rejected by Medicaid or Medicare because a doctor didn't sign, or a wrong code was put in there for the procedure that was given. So instead of bringing those back, and redoing them, I, they, they put them in a box and they put them into this room. Wow. So, I mean, and who knows what's there as far as potential revenue that you can go after. I mean, they could give, you know, if you can't do it in-house, they could give a contract out to somebody on a percentage basis to go out and get those dollars for you. Absolutely. You know, it's just, uh, it's amazing. So, but... Uh, those are some of the nightmare stories I'm here. Well, I'm going to make it a point to make sure I get to Cook County Hospital in the very near future before, you <laughs> before I get there. <laughs> do they do cosmetic surgery? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, 
No, there's no question. Well, you know what? Let me ask you. One of the big questions I've got to ask you is, okay, so, um, you know, you, you've got a number of opponents. Of course, the election is in uh, February 2nd, and yeah. uh, the petition season is already uh, Started underway. Yesterday. And uh, But the real question I have to worry about is, let, let's say that you win the primary, God willing, and um, not that I'm endorsing you officially at this point, but, you know, I got you on the air. I'll be nice to you. Thank you, Avi. You're welcome. And let's say you win the general election. I, I don't think Republicans have won very much here on a countywide basis for a while. Um, does Kathleen come along or does she stay at Waterwreck? <laughs> <laughs> That's far from uh, what I even started looking at right now. Oh, and, <laughs> I'm just in, focusing on the campaign. In, in case you tuned in late, Kathleen, hi, how you doing? I hope everything's going well, and it's always a pleasure. Thank you. Um, but, but getting back to... Um, you know, you know, the amazing thing about this is is that it's still over. A, you you wouldn't, this the campaign season is so long in Illinois right now. We have the earliest primary in yeah. the entire nation that um, right now, as is, is this is now late August, early September, it, it'd be something like 16 months or so before you actually uh, took office. Yeah, but I mean, the nice thing about it is basically yeah. we've cut a month and a half off the primary election because the primary election used to be at the end of March. Well, actually, I third prefer week March. I prefer it in early February myself. Um, from the standpoint, of, yeah, it actually makes the primary election. And in Chicago, the primary election is pretty much the election, yeah. and, and uh, pretty much throughout Cook County. And also, also, it helps me distribute Jewish Chicago much easier during that time period. I have to compete with less Put your stuff snow on tires people's shelves, and <laughs> you'll be yeah. driving around in January. <laughs> No, it, it the Jewish. You know, it actually works out very good for Jewish Chicago for me to put it out in uh, January. And this year, I'm definitely putting it up for early voting. And remember, by the way, for all of you, and this is way early, that I will have a complete judicial review in Jewish Chicago. And so many of you guys, you know, I didn't know this guy was running. I didn't know that guy's running. You got to get it right away before even early voting. So we've learned, uh, we've got to put it out uh, real early. And it, you know, there's going to be a lot of people running a lot of races. I mean, there are disenchanted taxpayers out there. I mean, every time somebody, meant, you know, I mentioned to somebody I'm running for, they said, go for it. You know, just people are really upset, you know, and that's... The, the, I've never seen like anything like it. As a matter of fact, even at uh, National Night Out yesterday, the dissatisfaction people have with local officials and what's going on and citywide officials, I have never seen people this much involved in a situation and ready to... Um, you know, you know, ready for new leadership throughout. Well, you, you look at this last mayoral election for the municipalities. Yeah. A lot of longtime mayors lost this time around. And uh, and I think people are uh, are finally reading, finally uh, researching the people that are running to see, you know, who best they want to uh, to run their municipality or their, their government for. You know, they're looking very carefully and people want change and not just from a 20. Yeah. <laughs> No, they, they, but you know what, there's a good change and there's bad change. Just change for change's sake doesn't make any sense. You've Chang, got, change is over. It's new ideas now. Oh, that's the, uh, well, you're, you're more into this than I am. <laughs> new energy, new ideas, and new leadership. Well, actually, you, you, some of the ideas that you, you know, I was really curious to see what you were going to present today in terms of ideas and the way you've gone about things with using a, basically a corporate mind. Yeah to analyze the situation actually surprised me. And these are new ideas that I've never heard anybody uh, promote before on a county basis, which probably explains what's going on with the county. Yeah, and, <laughs> I, and I think, you know, people are open to listening to that. And I mean, I mean, if you show them, you know, where the problems are, people can understand. You know, but with what's going on, you know, that not being very transparent, you know, people are concerned. And, uh, you know, I mentioned the one company that I talked about earlier. I was at a, a meeting in Niles on Sunday morning, and I had two young, or Two middle-aged women come up to me and they said, you know, you're the only one that's addressing it from the business aspect. She said, uh, I'm a small business owner and I'm getting ready to move my operations out of the county or I'm going to work for my house. You know, because of the, the communication error and the way it is, you really don't need an office anymore. It's, it's you, you can work from your home. Yeah, my, <clears throat> I, I, won't, I won't tell you my problems on air, but yeah, I am working out of the home now and as a matter of fact, the business here is so lousy in this area that I'm actually, at least for me anyway, I'm actually looking at the idea of possibly getting a part-time job, God forbid. Anyway, <laughs> at this point. There might be a spot at the Water Reclamation District. Over. Oh, you mean the uh, president's okay. job? <laughs> <laughs> or commissioner. <laughs> you know what? We'll, we'll talk. Anyway, at this point, I want to thank very much my um, guest, the president of the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District and candidate for 
uh, president of the Cook County Board, Terry O'Brien. Thanks to my entire technical crew, Sonny Hirsch. We're completely out of time. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye-bye.